from uh, mid central Wisconsin right through the southeast. Thunderst uh, the tornadoes erupted. We had reports of three of them. Here you see them there. The one that Amy came from was three miles south of Faribault, but also many of them in Wisconsin. Now we've got a second front that's going to be coming through about midnight tonight. What does that mean for us? Well, basically the clouds will be on the increase. It's cloudy out there now. The possibility of some scattered thunder showers. I think it's uh, not too big of a chance that's Minnesota, six miles southwest of Faribault. Tom Lydon with the tail of the twister. I'm so glad you're okay. It's all that matters. We can build new, right? Jeannie Leap couldn't believe it. No one could. That her son Jason came face to face with the powerful tornado and survived. I thought I was done. I thought it was over. You did, huh? Yeah. You were in the house, huh? Yeah. When I got the phone call that he was in it, my heart just went to my feet. But then I guess that's every mother's reaction. Jason Lee was home alone when he opened the back door and saw the barn flying towards the house. I just dove back in the house right off the bat. I knew it had to be a tornado, and, and I just dove between the washer and dryer and, uh, and uh, covered my head and said a prayer. And afterwards, I couldn't believe I was alive. A Rice County deputy caught the twister on tape, and it was massive, 750 feet wide. It stayed on the ground for 16 minutes and seven and a half miles. With only a few minutes warning, the tornado came out of the northwest and ripped right through the Leeches barn, throwing it into the house. In fact, the little cat right here was in a barn just next door to this. About a minute later, it hit another farm just down the road and then disappeared. Well, I tried to save the car. I went. Jason Lee calmly explained it all to us. Then it finally struck him just how close a call he really had. Neighbors stared in suspended disbelief at the shredded barn and trees. The shell of a house literally sucked out. And even as the storm was heading out, neighbors were helping to clear debris to rebuild again. We'll make it. Okay. Okay. The final damage report, seven buildings destroyed, most of them farm buildings, barns, a hog shed, a cow shed. Not a single injury, no one killed. It's amazing. The concerning thing coming out of this tonight is how little warning people had, though. Just a few minutes before the twister hit, there was a severe thunderstorm warning. The National Weather Service, in fact, asked the deputies to go out, check out some suspicious radar activities, and the deputies were the ones that came back and said, hey, we have a tornado here. We can see it. We're taking pictures of it. Robin? Tom, so let's get Joe in here for a minute to find out if that is a typical thing, not to issue a tornado watch before a tornado hits. Joe? I would say it's fairly typical. Just because there is a severe thunderstorm watch issue does not preclude the fact that a tornado is possible. Now, you can still have severe thunderstorms producing tornadoes. It's just that they're more on an isolated basis. If a tornado watch had been issued, that means they're expecting more of a widespread tornado outbreak. But I shouldn't say this is typical, but it's not atypical either. So that's what we had to deal with this afternoon. Severe thunderstorms do and can produce tornadoes, and everybody has to be aware of that. There was some warning out there, and that's pretty typical of how these warnings do come out. Funnels are issued, or funnels are seen by some spotters or by law enforcement officials, and they radio back to the National Weather Service, and sometimes that causes the issuance of a tornado warning. Right now, things are a lot quieter. There's still a couple of counties under a tornado watch right now in the extreme southeastern part of the state until midnight. I think they're going to be dropped. You can see most of the activity moved down into Iowa, some more showers and storms in the northwest and west-central Wisconsin. That's pretty much about it for us here in Minnesota tonight. Different story for parts of Wisconsin. We're going to have all the details coming up in weather, and also we're going to take a look at a more fall-like forecast. Okay, Joe, we'll be waiting to hear from you. Thanks. September is usually a time to start thinking about the fall harvest, but tonight some Minnesota farmers are picking up the pieces after a devastating tornado. Good evening. The tornado touched down late this afternoon, just south of the metro area. And while there are no reports of injuries, the twister did considerable damage to farms and crops. The final cloud first formed when a series of strong thunderstorms rolled into Rice and Steele counties. The tornado touched down just southwest of Faribault, and that's where Carol Evans Melissa Young is tonight with the latest on the damage. Mel? Well, Diana, we're on the Schwab family farm, and the tornado swept through here late this afternoon. This used to be their grain bin. Now all you see is a concrete foundation and what's left of an old oak tree. The barn just beyond, there's even less left of that. The tornado took all the residents here in southern Rice County quite by surprise. They expect tornadoes in May or June, 
but everyone says no one has ever seen anything quite like this. On the road, and it just kept growing bigger and bigger as I went. Every mother's worst nightmare. The sound was like a scream, just a terrible high-pitched scream. Barn come flying at me, and I just dove back in the house right off the bat. I knew it had to be a tornado. And Donald Morgan saw it first. Oh, yeah, it's going to be an awful mess to clean up now. The funnel swirled around his car at a rural intersection, shattering every window. Took the windows right out. Just boom, and out they went. I put the brakes on and held my hand around my head and waited to see what happened next. Jason Leet lives up the road. He was the only one home when the twister plowed through his land. And I just dove between the washer and dryer and uh, and uh, covered my head and said a prayer. And afterwards, I couldn't believe I was alive. Amid the tangled metal and twisted wood, the house shaken at its very foundation, there was still cause for thanks. The way it was moving, I thought it was totally off the foundation, but it's still here and I'm still alive and that's all that matters. Very lucky. I just said I've got a good guardian angel. You know? Gloria Schwab is thankful, even though she lost her silo, her barn, her granary. She left her basement in time to see the devastating swirl drift away. And I went to my front door and I could see that funnel heading off in there so pretty. That thing was just waving in the sky, way up high. A quiet ending to a devastating September afternoon. Now, the Stilwaseka Electrical Cooperative is working overtime tonight trying to get the power lines restored to this area. They say this is the last main line they have to restore, and uh, they hope to have... Uh, there will be a couple folks who won't have power tonight, but otherwise, uh, including us, we don't have power right this second, but otherwise uh, they should have the power restored later on tomorrow. Back to you. All right, Melissa, thank you very much. The much storms rumble through earlier. Melissa Young told us and showed us some of the damage down south of here. Fortunately, the Twin Cities area escaped uh, the severe weather, but there still are some scattered showers possible throughout the night, maybe even the rumble of thunder. Let's see what's happened so far today. The high temperature, 87. Look at that. 87 degrees. Wow. Oh. Ooh. I hope you got out and enjoyed it all and died because we ain't gonna see we ain't gonna see that for a while. This morning's low is 72, and we've had just a little bit over five one hundredths of an inch of rain. Let's go on outside and see what's happening. There are actually some scattered showers now showing up on Super Doppler. We'll show you all of it in just a second. First, let's head on down to Twin Cities International and see what's going on at this hour. Temperature is still relatively mild at 73. Uh, we'll definitely get below 72, which is the low temperature so far today. We'll get way down below that tonight. 62 degrees, the dew point. The northwest wind now. And the rising barometer, all of these are indications that a change is a-brewing. All right, let's go to Super Doppler and we can see exactly what's happening. Very light showers, very light scattered showers. See them here down toward Independence in Hennepin County and over into Carver County. They just kind of developed in the past couple of hours. Also scattered showers up around Pine City in Chisago County. And to our neighboring uh, friends over in Wisconsin, you too getting some rain showers there. Everybody should see a couple of scattered showers, but there will not be any severe storms. As I told you at 5 and 6 tonight in the Twin Cities metro area, nor will there be any severe weather anywhere in the state. Temperatures look this way, 73 here, as I mentioned, and you can tell where the front is. Look at that. It drops to the 60s in St. Cloud. Brainerd is 61 with a shower, 55 with drizzle in Bemidji, and 53 degrees now it's down to at International Falls. Last night, we were looking out in the Dakotas for possible severe storm development, and they moved off and through the area this morning. They weren't severe, but we did have some thunderstorms around the metro area. They were not heavy. They were not severe. But this afternoon's action sure was. There it goes, though. It's leaving us in its wake. This cloud mass, that's the cool air coming down on us. And it will feel downright chilly tomorrow with winds gusting to 35, possibly 40 miles per hour. And now for the good news. Hurricane Louis. Call him. Going the other way. Oh, hi! I spotted it! Why is the sirens going off? I don't know. Call? Huh? Yeah. I don't know. Here, which way you want there it's going go? down. Karen, you want to go look at it? We'll go around. Look at it. It's coming up now. Just want to get in the back of my truck? Where are we going? Well, I don't know. We'll go around because it's going away from us. You can go out on this road, you'll get a better shot of it. Why don't you take it and go? I got these guys here. Who are they? Quality. I just got a new fridge. They're coming this way. I don't know, it's hard to tell, boy. It's not on the ground or anything. They just reported over the pager 60 mile an hour winds like in 
Bedford. Well, that's why. There it goes. Damn it. Stay up, you bitch. There goes, there goes the siren. I think Lane went and called. You can hear the sirens now. It's on the ground. Yeah. Look at that shit. Holy cow. Look at that. Unbelievable. Oh yeah, can you see it? Lance, do me a favor. Go go call Lori at Hardy's and tell her that that thing's on their way. Look at it's on the ground now. 332-7525, three, three, five, five, Lance. Right, don't go off, Karen. Look at that. How far over is it? Well, it came across the pager. It was over by Medford somewhere. Heading towards the outlet center. Wow, it's just sitting there now. Look at that. Oh, no. oh my God. Can you get a better shot of it? Can we go up on a roof or something? Not really. It's just sitting there, man. You just come from Lance. Come here, you want to see it? So from here. No, not yet. It wouldn't be. Got to be down by Medford. Whoa! Yeah. That's a tornado. My cute. Getting right for Faribault. Oh, I see it. Huh? Come on. Run this. What do I gotta do? Is it going? Yeah. Let's go up on like uh, Drapers Hill Lane. Yeah, well. I can't that believe one tornado sirens have it going off. Right, Mars tons are going off. Yeah, it's yeah. going away from us, so that's a good thing. Did the sheriff's department know something the waterway shit didn't go off? Nothing no. goes on. I tried calling the sheriff's department and I couldn't get through. Did they ring? Huh? Did it ring? Did should it? have called 911. I did. It didn't go. It looked busy. Oh, somebody reported it. Where the fuck did it go? It's up there. It's going that way. It's right there. See it? It's right there. It's going away from man. That's cutting a path, boy. She's not stopping. Passing. Best place to go would be like a... Let's go and find out what the damage is. That thing's got a lot of shit sucked up in it, man. Hang on, let me get a shot of it. It's coming back, Lance, that thing. Lance, that son of a bitch looks like it's coming back this way. Okay, hang on. Is that coming back? Of the clouds. Here comes the sheriff behind. It's, it's starting that. to lose a Look little bit stuff, of power. Look at the stuff sucking up in it. Yeah, but hey, it's losing some power. See, look how narrow it's getting. But it looks like it might be coming back this way. Been on the ground for a long time. I'll bet you it's close to 10 minutes. Did it go away? No, uh, no, it's starting to come back up in the clouds now. There it goes. There it goes. There's the tail. See it? There's still a. Oh, it's back down again. Yeah, it went back down again. It's weakening. Mm -hmm. It'll be all right here, I think. So, 
base is getting fat again. There it goes. A beer can stuck on a power line. Amazing. Totally amazing. Let's go, don't take too long. Can't hardly believe it. There's some dial down lines up here. We're coming through. Here's the path. The cornfield's just wiped out. You can see the path where it went right through here. There's where the corn starts to get taller again with the beaten path it took. It's just devastating. It's still shaking. Where'd that come from? I know of it. Holy cow. Just mangled. left of it and a silos there milking parlor barn there was a shed here too it's all down so the corn bin was standing with a tree on it now there's the corn bin here this is the platform it was on the tree standing in the middle of it now that gravity box we saw earlier and the debris is just scattered across the entire field. Pulled all the rails from it. 
just amazing. Amazing things that. Take it out, take it out. Much farther. Oh, the only thing that's vanished just across the road, and then she's gone. Oh, shit. Get hard here. Get here for a while, too. Oh, it's hard to sit here. I bet you that. Well, we get sent to the corner. I lost a goddamn thing. Well, we got raining so hard. Well, we walked. We stopped. 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 We it just started coming down. It's like nothing. I mean, all of a sudden, boom, it just. <laughs> Not all these new things. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my The ball tank's laying down there. Like, here's yeah. the gravity, gravity boxes, there's the running gears for gravity boxes out in the field. Well, the gravity box is right back here. If one of them one's there, in the yard, in the front yard. One's in the yard, one's in the yard. There's the running gears the for them. Like Way out there, here, we'll get a good look at it. I've got the dryer. There's the running gear for him, out there in the field, when I see it. And then we saw one up by the house, up there. And then there's one over here. Just see the path it cut. Yep. Five of them in a fucking tree above the corn crib. Yeah. <laughs> man, it's 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 devastating, man. What it does does. That's this more dragon back to you. This is you and shit. Gravity box here. Where it come out into these trees. Um. Let me try to give you a good idea of where the running gear for the wagons are. If you look out over this tire in the field, you can see them way down there. Whoops, sorry. Way down in the, way down in there, they are, over the top of that tire, and I'll give you an idea of where, how far that tornado took them. That's my view there. And I'm probably 20 feet from the gravity box. I grabbed it and just destroyed. The house is standing, the people are all right. They were in the basement. There's a gravity box in the front yard and and that same one come from all the way down in this field too, from this house here. Come from down there, all the way up there and it's up here, laying in the front yard, right there. There it is there. And the other one here is over here, right behind me. Right here. Stuck between the trees. Look at this. It's the only thing that stopped it from going anywhere. These two trees. Was these two trees. Stopped it from going any further. Probably would have stayed right in. Okay. You can look down there where the cornfield starts. That's where the running gear is setting for these wagons. I'm standing on, and I'll go back to a normal view, and they come this far. Right up here is the gravity box I'm standing on, and that's how far they come from that tornado. You can see, let's see if I can get it here. There's a tire in the field right there. That's where they come. The tree with apples on it yet. A lot of them on the ground. Wiped out the whole crop and then yet you have a tree like this about 20 yards away with that gravity box setting up in the front yard. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, that was fine. Let's get an idea. Totally. There's a pole building there, man. Right? Uh -huh.
Turn the camera off. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, All right. Crime scene. Oh, damn, Rose hey, storm scene. scene. Thank you very storm much for leaving. Scene. Never do that again. Our top story tonight, a twister tears through the Minnesota countryside, flattening homes, trees, 